thieves will steal our cash, our cars, our valuables. Just about anything they can get their hands on. But now the police are using cutting-edge technology to catch the bad guys. The CCTV is gold dust. Great evidence for the police. Got to have him stopped. Local councils, shops and businesses are fighting crime with their own tricks and traps. There's a eureka moment when you get that evidence. And the public are using secret cameras to make sure crooks get their comeuppance. It makes me feel so angry. He's paid the post. He's been dealt with. Yes, we've got her. So anyone who's up to no good had better think twice. They might just get caught red-handed. Today, Ramsey's small village shop is his pride and joy. So when a knife-wielding robber tries to get his cash, Ramsey takes the biggest gamble of his life. That's a spur of the moment, you know. Dremel kicked in and I've been working day and night. He wants money for nothing. Perhaps it was unwise for a five-foot-five grandfather to tackle a six-foot armed robber. But it's the man with the knife who rues the day he took on Ramsey. Also today, businessman Paul discovers bundles of cash have been regularly stolen from his safe. I got all the lads downstairs and just said, I've got one of the most difficult speeches I'm ever going to make to the staff. We've got a thief in the company. So he lays a high-tech trap for the culprit, but he simply isn't prepared for what it reveals. To be betrayed like that is very, very hurtful. And an ingenious plan to steal computers goes from bad to worse. This thief fancies himself as a cat burglar, but he needs to watch where he puts his paws. The village of Kokenzi on Scotland's east coast is just up the road from Edinburgh, a short bus ride. 30 years ago, village store owner Ramsey used to make the journey daily as a driver for the bus company. I used to drive a uh, 26 bus from <laughs> Edinburgh. Then I seen this shop for sale. Ramsey was thrilled at the chance to buy the Kakenzi village shop and rushed back to tell his wife and daughter, Sam. I remember my dad coming home and saying, I found an amazing place to stay. So of course he brought us down one day and I took her breath away. It was just picturesque, serene, calm. And I thought, yep, absolutely lovely. Since then, Ramsey has built the shop up, raised three children with his wife, Rifat, and established himself at the heart of the Kakenzi community. Everybody knows Ramsey. Everybody. Kokenzi would be quiet, let's say, without Ramsey. He basically is one in a million. Everybody's beautiful in his eyes. Nothing is a problem for my dad, nothing whatsoever. The whole community is uh, like uh, one whole family. You know, we have been here there about 30 years now. Customers, we've grew up with them. We went through their sicknesses, health, divorces, marriages, every part of life. But after 30 happy years in the shop, Ramsey's faith in human nature is suddenly tested to the limit by a violent robbery. It's just after 6 a.m. on a Sunday. In the morning, I opened my shop and I'd done the papers, delivery papers. The store has CCTV cameras which also record sound. It isn't long before a customer comes in. He asked me for cigarette papers, asked him for his age, make sure he was over 18. Ramsey gets the cigarette papers, but then another man bursts into the shop. As soon as I open the cash register, this other guy comes running in. The man crashes forward, knocking the displays and baskets on the counter. And grabs the till. He has a large knife and points it an inch from Ramsey's face. The customer runs out as the thief tries to grab cash from the till. I tried to close the till, but it couldn't close it because his hand was in it. Ramsey hangs on to the till for grim life and shouts at the top of his voice. That's the spur of the moment, you know. Dremel kicked in and I started to get very angry and I've been working day and night. He wants money for nothing. 
The six foot tall robber towers over Ramsey, who's only five foot five. He said, he's going to stab me. Give me the money, I'm going to stab you. But Ramsey ignores the warning and continues yelling. I thought if I shout, somebody from the street might hear me and come and give me a hand. But no one arrives to help, so Ramsey goes on the offensive, the opposite of what police would suggest. I don't know where I got the strength from, but I just uh, grabbed his hood so he wouldn't stab me. It happened so fast, but to me it felt like hours and hours. I was trying to bang his head so he will be hurt and uh, leave me alone. Ramsey manages to close the till. The frenzied attacker blindly waves his knife around, but doesn't harm Ramsey. Fortunately, I think he took a fright. Ramsey's brave resistance has worked. The arms robber decides to run away. He's managed to steal just 10 pounds. I was very, very angry, so I ran after him. But then I said, no, no, I'm not going out of the shop. Then after about two or three minutes, I composed myself and uh, phoned the police. Uh, somebody tried to rob me uh, just about two minutes ago. The police arrived minutes later. At home nearby, Ramsey's daughter Sam is waking up to alerts on her phone and computer from friends who've seen the police at the shop. She rushes to see her father. I've got no shoes on, no top, no nothing. I'm just running, basically. It was, I've oh got a thousand and one things going through my head. A police officer stops Sam outside the store. He said, your dad was a brave man. I can remember hysterically screaming, does that mean he's no more? And he's like, no, but we can't say anything at this point. It was just the worst day of my life. She was very worried and crying. I was worried that she will phone my wife. She might take a fright and uh, something might happen to her. Ramsey notices Sam outside. So he comes to the door and he's a bit dazed. Me being me, oh my God, what's happened to you? What's happened to you? I'm absolutely fine, I'm absolutely fine. Is your mum okay? Is your mum okay? Sam's sister arrives and they go inside. The shot was an absolute mess. Me and my sister we look at each other and we're like, cameras. When they check the CCTV camera recording, they are distraught their dad was in such extreme danger. What we saw and how close the blade was, it was just awful. It's only money. His life was more important. But then when I think why he done it or how he must have felt at the moment, then I thought, yep, yeah, very proud of him for doing what he done. I was being brave and silly at both at the same time. Silly because for a couple of pounds, your life is more worth more than that. Brave because you have to protect your own property. If you're not brave, then anybody can trample you. The police assure Sam they'll catch the robber soon, but she wants to identify the man herself. She gives the footage to the officers and takes a copy home. My younger brother's here with the wee ones, and of course, he's getting a bit hysterical here. Um, I'm away to search in the streets, and I goes, rather than doing this, I've got it on USB, why don't we put it on social media and we'll take it from there. Sam posts the footage online, and she's stunned by what happens next. We had a massive, massive response, which was very, very overwhelming, and I had the name within the first three minutes. Sam immediately calls the police and they arrest the prime suspect. Priceless moment to hear that he was arrested. I was very proud uh, of the police that they caught the culprit very quickly so he could commit no other crimes. In court, the arrested man pleaded guilty to robbery and assault. He was sentenced to three years and two months behind bars with a further two years on licence. Ramsey hopes the man will change his ways. I was very sad, the young man ruining his life because uh, he can make better life for himself. And I don't want to see him go to prison all the time. I just want him to be a nice citizen of the community. Despite being shaken by the attack, Ramsey went straight back to work and his faith in human nature has been quickly restored. Customers came in and had a wee banter with him. You're not going to hold us up, Ramsey, are you? <laughs> a few people kind of got himself back to his normal self. 
I'm very grateful to the people of Kukenzi because they were very, very helpful to me and very supportive. And it's not just the locals who've been supportive. Because the footage was online, Ramsey received well-wishers messages from all around the world. From America, from Canada, from Turkey. Some were former customers, some were people that had stayed here, some were relatives of relatives that are here. Unbelievable support. One of my customers, uh, she phoned up from uh, Sweden that she was very worried about me. <laughs> that makes me laugh and makes me proud. <laughs> I admire my dad. Um, he's my hero. Um, and I don't think I could ask for a better person to be my father. Say bye-bye. And now, a foolhardy attempt to come down through the roof ends up being mission really impossible for a bungling burglar. Breaking through a ceiling tile, this thief's luring himself into a computer store. He's caught on camera, and as he's about to find out, he's also caught on a dangling cable. Guess you could call that a tripwire. Now, ironically, the only thing that doesn't come with wireless in this high-tech store is our thief's left shoe, and he struggles to untangle it. It's not like this in the movies. Shoe back on, he decides to get on with the thieving, but forgets to cover his face until it's too late. Durr. Unsurprisingly, being a high-tech store, everything's alarmed and the hapless thief's forced to give up empty-handed. He decides to go back the way he came in, trying to escape without leaving a trace. Less cat burglar, more bull in a china shop. This decidedly non-master criminal is still at large, but police hope the footage will lead to somebody identifying him. The camera shows he hasn't got a leg to stand on and probably needs locking up for his own safety. There is a saying, keep your friends close, but your enemies closer. But they can be one of the same thing when a friend, someone you trust, lets you down. A safe cracked. Someone that I'd known for 20 odd years. A friend betrayed. Just couldn't believe it was the person who it was. Nobody wins. Big price to pay for a small amount of money. Stevenage in Hertfordshire. In the 1950s, thousands of houses were built here to accommodate Londoners moving out of the capital looking for a fresh start. Three decades later, Paul came to the area to set up a new business, and it soon thrived. We were a fencing company, but over the years, people asked us to other jobs. We've been a successful company uh, for the best part of 30 years. A lot of family members involved. Paul employs 20 people, mostly mates from his footballing days, who've been with him from the start. Some of the friendships, 30-odd years, 20 years at a time, it's been a close-knit company that has been good, and I've enjoyed it that way. Paul's office is directly above the factory floor. He likes to be close to his team. Valuables and petty cash are kept in a safe behind his desk. My secretary keeps money in the safe because the lads are paid in cash each week. In all his years running the firm, Paul's never had to take serious disciplinary action against any of his staff. And we have had one or two things go missing, but minor. In the building industry, it's not acceptable, but these things do happen. Paul had a security camera fitted years ago. Because his employees are his friends, he thought he'd never need to use it. But he was wrong. It's a normal day in the office, but then Paul's assistant tells him she thinks money has disappeared from the safe. My secretary asked me if I'd been in the safe and taken some money out. I had to answer honestly that I didn't know because I always go in and out of the safe. Thought it might have been myself getting old maybe, I don't know. Paul puts it down to his forgetfulness, but over the next couple of weeks, more money goes missing and he realizes he must do something about it. 
my first instinct was to be absolutely gutted because I knew it was someone within the firm. And that is one of the hardest things in life that you've known when you know people long term. An absolute kick in the stomach, it really is. Paul's investigation begins. He checks the CCTV footage, but sees nothing unusual. His office is always locked when left unattended. And only a handful of trustworthy staff have keys. But then he remembers there's a spare key in the cutlery drawer. We'd hidden a key in case we'd forgotten any of our keys. Any thief could have found the key in the drawer, which explains how he gets into the office. But the safe has a combination code, and that's only known by Paul and his inner circle. The only way that they can find the number to the safe was to deliberately look while it was being accessed by authorised members of staff. Paul's investigation has reached a dead end, but he's determined to find the thief. He made a phone call to a surveillance camera company who were absolutely superb, waited for the staff to leave, came early evening when the offices were all shut. The security expert suggests hiding a tiny spy camera in a box file. The guy drilled out the hole, fixed and installed the covert security camera, uh, stuck it on the inside, documentation there to cover it up, straight onto the safe, and you would have never have known that camera was there in a million years. A state-of-the-art kit records footage whenever it senses motion. The trap was set, as simple as that. And within days, money goes missing again. Paul and his secretary get together to watch the spy camera footage. We're both wondering who it could be, because you're turning over who you think it was. We were both wrong. Paul is stunned. The thief is one of his oldest and closest friends. The man has entered his office wearing bright yellow rubber gloves to avoid leaving fingerprints. He goes straight to the petty cash box and takes out hundreds of pounds. Once he's pocketed the cash, the thief puts everything else back into the safe as he found it. The evidence couldn't be more clear-cut. Just couldn't believe it was the person who it was. Couldn't believe it. Someone that I'd known, played football with and against for 20-odd years. If he'd come to me and asked me for any financial help, it would have definitely been forthcoming. To be betrayed like that is, is very, very hurtful. Very, very hurtful. But the security camera recordings hold a further disturbing secret. When Paul watches the footage once more, he hears something that shocks him. When the light switch goes, you hear the light switch go. And then after that, you can hear him talking to someone. There's someone else there. The sound is nearly inaudible, but it seems like that thief is talking to an accomplice. Paul realises why there's never been any evidence recorded on the office security cameras. The CCT cameras were switched off at the main power supply. They've been coming in, turning the CCTV off, doing the thefts, turning it back on again. Paul has no idea who the accomplice might be, but he's got the evidence he needs to confront the thief. I got all the lads downstairs and just said, I've got one of the most difficult decisions and speeches I'm ever going to make to the staff. We've got a thief in the company. And it hurts me to say it. But I said, the thing is, I know who the thief is. The thief knows who he is. I know who he is. Because he's committed the crime wearing the loudest pair of yellow gloves you could ever know. I then looked at the gentleman in question and industrial language told him to leave immediately. And I was going down to police. While Paul's giving a statement at the station, the thief hands himself in. He had no choice, really, but he, he'd done probably the bravest thing rather than run away and not face what was coming to him. In court, the man admitted stealing. He was ordered to pay costs, compensation and fined. The accomplice was never identified. 
I don't think he is a bad, bad person. I really don't. He's just made one stupid decision and it's affected his life, his friendship. Such a shame. Because of what happened, Paul decided to bring his retirement date forward. He's now leading a life of leisure. We have to move on now. I hope other people learn that it's a big price to pay for a small amount of money. Security cameras can be highly effective, but they can also be turned off, faulty or damaged. So it's always good to have a backup plan, just in case. CCTV is fantastic, but it's not entirely foolproof. So you do need to make sure that your images are properly backed up uh, and that your backup facility is secure. The CCTV cameras don't hold the data, it's the hard drive. So you've really got to make sure that your security around the hard drive is second to none. And you should make sure the hard drive isn't obvious, isn't in the same place as the camera in case somebody wants to damage it or destroy it. So is it in another room? Can it be secured? Can it be hidden away? There are some fantastic gadgets available on the market in relation to CCTV and security. Um, you can even upload um, images directly from your CCTV to your mobile phone. So even when you're on holiday, out of the country, on business, you can see exactly what's happening at home or at your particular business premises. If you're going to use a CCTV camera within your property, it's essential that you have it in the correct position. You want to capture the criminal's face as they come through the door. So use your friends and family to test it and make sure you get to grips with the system before you actually use it. Portsmouth on the south coast. A major naval port and for many a sailor on shore leave, famous for its friendly pubs. The Milton Arms first opened its doors to thirsty customers 400 years ago. Chris is the latest in a long line of owners. Taking over a pub is a big plunge, but I've really enjoyed the challenge. Um, there's long hours, but it's really rewarding when you're seeing it all come together. And the music events we're doing here are getting lots and lots of uh, popularity and some good feedback. Because Chris's music nights are so well attended, pub takings are on the up. And so are donations to charities the pub supports. Chris was encouraged to get involved in fundraising through a close friend, Matt, who was a volunteer youth worker before he tragically took his own life two years ago. Matt worked with troubled teens at a local shelter. Probably one of the nicest people you'll ever meet. And I think that it's testament to him that people still remember him so fondly. For me and his family and his best friends, it was exceptionally difficult for us to... Um, to try and process really losing someone that's so close to us. So we wanted to have some form of legacy whereby we could use his name in a positive manner. Chris decided to celebrate Matt's life by raising money for a local charity he was involved in. It's called Motivate and it helps young people like Katie. I first got involved with Motivate when I was 13, um, struggling with school and life at home. Um, Motivate really did help me out Katie now wants to go to university. And to help her and the other teenagers, Chris raises money through a collection tin next to the pub's till. It raised a considerable sum in donations each month until one day it is stolen in broad daylight. Chris is angry. He feels it insults the memory of his friend and sets out to track down the thoughtless thief by enlisting an army of locals. It's a Sunday afternoon when one of the barmaids, Carla, discovers the theft. Carla went to go and make a donation in the charity tin and it wasn't there. I'm thinking, who the hell is taking this charity tin? Um, there's lots of personal attachment to it as well, but I mean, just in general, for a charity tin to go missing it is terrible. The Milton Arms has security cameras, so Chris asks another barmaid, Danny, to see if the CCTV recording shows exactly what day and time the charity tin disappears. I knew that it was their Thursday because I put some money in there. So I went through to Friday. You can see it there and then you can see it not there. So the tin was stolen two days ago when Chris and Danny were getting the pub ready for the weekend. They go through that day's footage minute by minute. Just before the time the tin disappears, a customer who isn't a regular comes into the pub. 
the guy come in saying that can he wait for his girlfriend and I was like yeah no that's fine. He takes his seat at the bar whilst trying to make the scene look a little bit more casual is pretending as it appears to uh, use his phone. At the time Chris is up a ladder to the right of the man decorating the pub and Danny stopped taking to the man's left. He checks she isn't looking at him then slowly moves his hand towards the donation tin. You'll see him giving a quick nudge to see exactly what the potential reward is going to be from this risk he's about to take. He then asked for a glass of water, so then I gave him a glass of water as well. Here it comes. The man takes a sip, undoes his jacket, waits until Chris and Danny are looking the other way, and then snatches the tin. But just as he's nearly got it covered, this clumsy bloke almost drops the lot. I did hear money fall, but when you look, you don't think to think that someone's got a charity box, you just think they've dropped their change. Chris was too far away to hear the charity tin being juggled. He must have been thinking that was his moment he was going to be caught, and he thought it was his lucky day when it wasn't. The thief hides the tin in his jacket and carries on pretending to wait for his girlfriend. He even joins in with Chris's conversation as he walks by. I just spoken to Danny about the fact that Noel Gallagher has been booked for a local music festival, and he pipes up and said, Noel Gallagher, really? He's at local music festival. I was like, yeah. He goes, and he started to pretend to speak to the other person on the phone, saying, let's get our tickets. A few minutes later, the thief walks out, taking money meant for teenagers like Katie, not for him. There was a number of times I might have sworn to, uh, to try and uh, calm my anger because seeing someone be so cold in the taking of something that means a lot to everyone that's been involved in it, really, it had a, a massive negative effect on me, I think, really, that's, to put it bluntly. The thief may not have dropped the tin, but he has dropped a clanger. Chris is a skilled events promoter and knows how to spread news fast. He enlists the help of a colleague, Steve, and they spring into action. Steve made the decision to put it on social media because we've got such a large, large network with all the businesses that we're involved with. In a matter of minutes, the thief's face is popping up on computer screens and smartphones across the city. The snowball effect from that was massive. I mean, I think we had over 500 shares within an hour. His image spreads through Portsmouth fast, and he soon realizes he's got nowhere to run. Within uh, 24 hours, person had uh, given themselves up and made themselves known to police. Case closed. In court, the man pleaded guilty to four counts of theft, including the charity tin, and was sentenced to three months in prison. Chris was delighted with the outcome and the way his customers rallied round to help the charity afterwards. People were uh, happy to come and drop in coins then started to turn to people that were happy to drop in notes with more and more local businesses and people offering to support them more so there's been a big benefit for something that we could have lost a lot basically that's all for today join us next time to see some other villains who've been caught red-handed Another appointment to cook at 8 tonight as we set our timers for this week's Great British Bake Off. That's followed at 9 by the return of Argo as Michelle Keegan signs up for duty. Up next, it's Bargain Hunt. Thieves will steal our cash, our cars, our valuables. Just about anything they can get their hands on. But now the police are using cutting-edge technology to catch the bad guys. The CCTV is gold dust. Great evidence for the police. Gotta have him stopped. Local councils, shops and businesses are fighting crime with their own tricks and traps. There's a eureka moment when you get that evidence. And the public are using secret cameras to make sure crooks get their comeuppance. It makes me feel so angry. He's paid the post. He's being dealt with. Yes, we've got her. So anyone who's up to no good had better think twice. They might just get caught red-handed. Today, Ramsey's small village shop is his pride and joy. So when a knife-wielding robber tries to get his cash, 
Ramsey takes the biggest gamble of his life. That's just part of the moment, you know. Dream will kick in and I'm been working day and night. He wants money for nothing. Perhaps it was unwise for a five foot five grandfather to tackle a six foot armed robber. But it's the man with the knife who rues the day he took on Ramsey. Also today, businessman Paul discovers bundles of cash have been regularly stolen from his safe. I got all the lads downstairs and just said, I've got one of the most difficult speeches I'm ever going to make to the staff. We've got a thief in the company. So he lays a high tech trap for the culprit, but he simply isn't prepared for what it reveals. To be betrayed like that is very, very hurtful. And an ingenious plan to steal computers goes from bad to worse. This thief fancies himself as a cat burglar. But he needs to watch where he puts his paws. The village of Kokenzi on Scotland's east coast is just up the road from Edinburgh, a short bus ride. 30 years ago, village store owner Ramsey used to make the journey daily as a driver for the bus company. I used to drive uh, 26 bus from <laughs> Edinburgh, then I seen this shop for sale. Ramsey was thrilled at the chance to buy the Kakenzi village shop and rushed back to tell his wife and daughter Sam. I remember my dad coming home and saying, I found an amazing place to stay. So of course he brought us down one day and I took her breath away. It was just picturesque, serene, calm, and I thought, yep, absolutely lovely. Since then, Ramsey has built the shop up raised three children with his wife, Rifat, and established himself at the heart of the Kakenzi community. Everybody knows Ramsey. Everybody. Kokenzi would be quiet, let's say, without Ramsey. He basically is one in a million. Everybody's beautiful in his eyes. Nothing is a problem for my dad, nothing whatsoever. The whole community is uh, like uh, one whole family. You know, we have been here there about 30 years now. Customers, We've grew up with them, we went through their sicknesses, health, divorces, marriages, every part of life. But after 30 happy years in the shop, Ramsey's faith in human nature is suddenly tested to the limit by a violent robbery. It's just after 6am on a Sunday. In the morning, I opened my shop and I'd done the papers, delivery papers. The store has CCTV cameras which also record sound. It isn't long before a customer comes in. He asked me for cigarette papers, asked him for his age, make sure he was over 18. Ramsey gets the cigarette papers, but then another man bursts into the shop. As soon as I open the cash register, this other guy comes running in. The man crashes forward, knocking the displays and baskets on the counter. And grabs the till. He has a large knife and points it an inch from Ramsey's face. The customer runs out as the thief tries to grab cash from the till. I tried to close the till, but it couldn't close it because his hand was in it. Ramsey hangs on to the till for grim life and shouts at the top of his voice. That's the spur of the moment, you know. Adrenaline kicked in and I started to get very angry and I'm been working day and night. He wants money for nothing. The six foot tall robber towers over Ramsey, who's only five foot five. I'll stab you. He said, he's going to stab me. Give me the money, I'm going to stab you. But Ramsey ignores the warning and continues yelling. I thought if I shout, somebody from the street might hear me and come and give me a hand. But no one arrives to help, so Ramsey goes on the offensive, the opposite of what police would suggest. I don't know where I got the strength from, but I just uh, grabbed his hood so he wouldn't stab me. It happened so fast, but to me it felt like hours and hours. I was trying to bang his head so he will be hurt and uh, leave me alone. Ramsey manages to close the till. The frenzied attacker blindly waves his knife around, but doesn't harm Ramsey. Fortunately, I think he took a fright. Ramsey's brave resistance has worked. 
the armed robber decides to run away. He's managed to steal just ten pounds. I was very, very angry, so I ran after him. But then I said, no, no, I'm not going out to the shop. Then after about two or three minutes, I composed myself and uh, phoned the police. Uh, somebody tried to rob me. Uh, just about two minutes ago. The police arrived minutes later. At home nearby, Ramsey's daughter Sam is waking up to alerts on her phone and computer from friends who've seen the police at the shop. She rushes to see her father. And I've got no shoes on, no top, no nothing. I'm just running, basically. It was, I've got a thousand and one things going through my head. A police officer stops Sam outside the store. He said, your dad was a brave man. I can remember hysterically screaming, does that mean he's no more? And he's like, no, but we can't say anything at this point. It was just the worst day of my life. She was very worried and crying. I was worried that she will phone my wife. She might take a fright and uh, something might happen to her. Ramsey notices Sam outside. So he comes to the door and he's a bit dazed, me being me. Oh my God, what's happened to you? What's happened to you? I'm absolutely fine, I'm absolutely fine. Is your mum okay? Is your mum okay? Sam's sister arrives and they go inside. The shot was an absolute mess. Me and my sister we look at each other and we're like, cameras. When they check the CCTV camera recording, they are distraught their dad was in such extreme danger. What we saw and how close the blade was, it was just awful. It's only money. His life was more important. But then when I think why he done it or how he must have felt at the moment, then I thought, yep, yeah, very proud of him for doing what he done. I was being brave and silly at both at the same time. Silly because for a couple of pounds, your life is more worth more than that. Brave because you have to protect your own property. If you're not brave, then anybody can trample you. The police assure Sam they'll catch the robber soon, but she wants to identify the man herself. She gives the footage to the officers and takes a copy home. My younger brother's here with the wee ones, and of course, he's getting a bit hysterical here. Um, I'm away to search in the streets, and I goes, rather than doing this, I've got it on USB, why don't we put it on social media and we'll take it from there. Sam posts the footage online. 